countdown to TNF kicking off week four right here on NFL Network. It is a battle. Look at these two. Number one picks, Trevor Lawrence making his Jags primetime debut. We're looking for something from him. Joe Burrow and the Bengals ready to steal the show. They're hot in the AFC North right now. Jags, Bengals week four starting right here on NFL Network. 8 p.m. Eastern. Keep it here all day long, though. Stream it on the NFL app. So we'll get you set for that. Not just that, what's going on all day on Sunday leading up to Tom Brady, let's go. And his return to Fox, bro, Matt Castle is here yeah, to talk about that. What's up, Matt? Oh, well, what's going on? Hi, we're so happy to have you. Oh, I'm so happy to be here this morning. <laughs> Got Matt Castle, Peter Schrager, Dad's Kyle Brandt, I'm Kay Adams. Our show is presented to you by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. And we are off to Cincinnati. Time for Lee Block. Lee Block. Mm -hmm. oh. Cameron Wolf is uh, joining us right now. He's at Paul Brown Stadium. Cameron, big one. Big matchup between the Jags and the Bengals. Two number one picks, of course. It's also a reunion between Urban Meyer and Joe Burrow. Tell me about that. Yeah, Kay, when you look at this LSU, that's what we know Joe Burrow for, that big year. But before that, Urban Meyer and Burrow connected for three years at Ohio State. It's also a homecoming of sorts for Urban Meyer, coming back to Ohio. He went to school in Cincinnati. But the Burrow-Meyer connection is interesting. I asked Meyer this week, and he said that their relationship is fantastic. Also digged a little deeper and found it interesting that when Meyer took the Jaguars job, he got advice for two players, Alex Smith, who he coached at Utah, and Joe Burrow. And he asked two things for Burrow. He knew he was going to draft Trevor Lawrence. He wanted to ask him what would he want as a rookie quarterback from his coach. And Burrow told him two things. He said, hey, I want balance, running the ball, passing the ball, and also keep me out of harm's way, protecting him. So Meyer kept that in mind. He said, we're not there at this point on both of those things. We're pushing towards it. Burrow also said that he, he considers Meyer a friend. He expects them to have a pregame embrace. But once the game starts, they're trying to get a win. And Urban Meyer, nobody wants a win more than him. He's trying to avoid his first four-game losing streak as a head coach. He'll need a win tonight to do that. It's fascinating. Urban Meyer has coached uh, hundreds of current NFL players. He goes to Joe Burrow for some thoughts. Cameron, great stuff there. The Bengals, you look at the record, you're like, oh, they're rolling. They're actually dealing with a lot of injuries going into this one on a short week. What's the latest on their status, offense and defense? Peter, yeah, those Thursday night games are killer. There's a few big injuries, particularly on the Bengals' side. One, receiver T. Higgins, he's one of their big three receivers. He's out for this game, so that means a lot more targets for Jamar Chase and Tyler Boyd. Jamar Chase might finally get that uh, number one receiver attention with Shaq Griffin, but Tyler Boyd may have a lot more opportunities. He's probably going to see a lot of rookie cornerback Tyson Campbell, who moved into the starting lineup for Jacksonville after they traded C.J. Henderson. On the other side of the ball, the Bengals are also down safety Jesse, Jesse Bates, who I think is one of the best safeties in the league. I talked to a Bengals coach this week, and he said that Bates was having a really good year this year, particularly because he was playing team ball and doing a lot of the dirty work. So they'll need somebody to fill that. One of their starting corners, Cheeto Bay Awuzie, is also doubtful and not expected to play. You're going to see the return of Trey Waynes, who signed a big contract in 2020 but hadn't played a game here yet. He should start for Awuzie. So a lot of different moving parts in that cornerback group for the Bengals. And the Jaguars have a trio of receivers in Marvin Jones, LaVisca Chenault, and DJ Chark who try to exploit that. So those are injuries I'm watching ahead of Thursday night. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence has a nice supporting cast there. James Robinson was a top five rusher last season. And maybe they can get it going tonight against the top, the, I, the sixth best defense in the National Football League. Thank you so much, Cameron Wolf, there with the Cincinnati Bengals. Ahead of this matchup, it's Lawrence versus Burrow. It is tonight, two number one picks squaring off. Awesome way to kick off week four, in my opinion. We know it's coming Sunday night as well, though. The hype has been building for months. Buccaneers, Patriots, Brady, Belichick, that one in prime time, and we're pumped for that matchup. Is Coach Belichick? Check excited to scheme against his former quarterback. He was asked, of course, yesterday, how tough is it to defend TB12? Would you consider Tom a tough quarterback to defend? And if so, why? Uh, defend, do you consider him a tough quarterback to defend? Yeah. Is that the question? Yeah. Yeah. He's just tough, what, tough, he's just what, tough as any that? quarterback there is or ever has been. I mean, enough said. I mean, his numbers are incredible. He's about to pass the all-time passing record. He's done more than any other player at that position uh, in whatever measurement you want to take, whether it's yards, completions, touchdowns, championships, uh, you know, you name it. So put anything out there you want. Like, I don't get any tougher than him. 
tough to argue with that. Thank you so much, Bill Belichick, for that sound. Matt Castle is here. You're the perfect person spending four seasons with both of these guys. I imagine they both know how to make each other uncomfortable. They both know each other inside out very well. Who would you say has the game planning edge on Sunday? Oh, this is an interesting question, okay. right? Because you got Bill Belichick, a mastermind, and he's really good in putting together a definitive game plan to take away some of your weapons. But at the same time, when you look at this Tampa Bay offense, right? I have to give the I have to give the advantage to Tom Brady. He's very familiar with the scheme. He's very familiar with the personnel. Okay. He's played with guys like J.C. Jackson, Jonathan Jones, yeah. Devin McCourty. <laughs> you know some of that front, and so he understands the multiple use of, of personnel on the back end. But then you look at these guys. They got Chris Godwin, right? They've got Mike Evans. You look at the um, tight end position with Gronk and O.J. Howard, Cameron Brates, and then and then at the same time the running back situation is mm -hmm. outstanding as well. Leonard Fournette. And uh, who am I missing Rojo, here? Rojo, you're uh, Ronald Jones, my SC guy, my bad. But <laughs> with that being said, they've got so many weapons that you can't eliminate just one guy, right? And, and so that's a lot tougher task to game plan against Brady in this group than it is for Brady to go out and figure out what they're doing defensively against him. I think so, too. I, I imagine there might be a, a dynamic in this game where Belichick knows, guys, when it's third and medium, Tommy always is thinking this. And maybe that'll have some effect on this yeah. game, and that's fascinating. But, like, who who's going to game plan better? Like, the team that has way better players, like the Bucks roster is not even close to the, to the Patriots roster. Their quarterback is not even close to the Patriots quarterback. So I want to see something from Belichick in this game. Like, I, I think this is a real estate game for him in the sense that you're the greatest coach ever. You've stopped the greatest show on turf. Everyone bows down to you as they should. You can act however you want in press conferences because you have that much equity. What do you got in this game? You have a game plan? Are you going to shock the world? If you know Tom better than anybody who's ever been born has known Tom, can you use that? Can you channel that? I want to see acumen from him. I want to see uh, ingenuity because if they just get blown off like, you know, 31 to 10, what did he bring? The, the, if you, you have the greatest quarterback ever, you have the greatest coach ever, allegedly. This should not be a blowout. This should not. I want to see what they bring, because I remember some games where Patriots have jumped people, and it's obvious watching that they had better coaches. Never mind the players. Better coaches. You were on some of those teams, Matt. They got better coaches than this one, I, I, I guess. We should see it on the field, don't you think? I mean, to a certain degree, but at the same time, you have to look at this team in – this is a complete team with Tampa Bay, right? They're yeah. good on offense. They're good on defense. They're good in special teams. Right now, you've got a rookie quarterback playing for the New England Patriots, and he's done a tremendous job up to this point, but they have not got it going offensively, right? And so even last week when they're playing the Saints, first three series, they're three and out. Mm -hmm. That defense is on the field a long time. There's only so, so long that a defense can be out on the field right. before they start to wear down, before they start to give up some big plays. And the biggest issue for this defense so far has been in the beginning of games and a sustained mm -hmm. drive here and there. Other than that, they're pretty consistent, yeah. but they're not getting a ton of help from the offensive side of the ball. So they got to play complementary football or it's going to be a long day. There's a couple things that can go the other way, right? You could say that Brady was so prepared for the Rams that, okay, now I've got to prepare for this Patriots. Even Maybe it's a little quick and Belichick could have been sitting there all offseason like circling it like week four. I know mm. exactly how I'm going to finally stop mm. Tom Brady. Like, I, I would, this is my game. And he's at, but then you look at last week to the Saints, you're right. And it's like, we know what Jameis Winston is. You can game plan and scheme all you want. The Saints still came in there and scored points, and they want, like, it, it's hard to stop good offenses. And Tampa's offense is awesome, and there are just so many things. So you can game plan all you want. You can draw it up all you want. When the bullets are flying, like, Tom Brady's going to be a quarterback and have five different options to throw to. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't think they've seen an offense like this this season. They've played the Jets. Of course, they have played the Saints, and they played the Dolphins. They have not seen this Tampa offense, and they've not seen that all that we've did. Now, Telling me who's a better coach, Arians or Belichick? Well, we can talk about that. Who's got the advantage game planning, Brady or Belichick? Well, sometimes it is Jimmy's and Joe's over X's and O's, and I think Brady's got all the Jimmy's and Joe's in this mm -hmm. one. There's a big advantage, Brady's offensive weapons versus what they have on defense personnel wise. Mm -hmm. Does Bill Belichick have any edge on Tom Brady in this game? I mean, I wouldn't sit there and say that there's a major advantage in any any certain in any certain way. I mean, because really, when you're talking about Bill Belichick, the defensive coordinator, he's looking at that personnel group, and they've got good personnel over there, but they're missing Stephon Gilmore, who's their number one corner, right? And that thins them out a little bit in the secondary. I think the guy, this, the secondary itself, is very diverse, and they've got a lot of a lot of depth there. But at the same time, when you when you're sitting there and you're looking again. At the personnel. Well, that's the, the personnel aside. Does right. he have any edge with how well he knows him? 
it being in his bill. Any Because I'm not hearing any edge for the Patriots and Belichick in this one. And those two, I would think that would almost equalize them how well they know each other. But there's no edge for Bill Belichick in this well, game. Well, all he knows, right, simply the simple fact is he's looking at that offense and saying, okay, he, he, knows, he knows Tom Brady. Yeah. He knows how he thinks. But he also knows he's going to be in the pocket. Mm -hmm. It's going to be play action pass. It's not going to be a lot of movement. He are going to try to get the ball out quick on screens at times. They're going to take their shots, right? So he's studying that offensive structure for Tampa Bay rather than Tom Brady because Tom Brady is your classic, typical, prototypical quarterback right. that's going to be in the pocket. So it's not like you have to worry about him escaping to the right or escaping to the Better, left. They want to push the interior of the pocket. Mm -hmm. if Does he any... have an edge over other coaches preparing for Tom Brady? Do you think Belichick sees it or do you think it's because he sees great coaches defensively all the time or do you think Belichick's like, to Kay's point, I know Brady doesn't like this one little thing we can mm -hmm. do. No one else Even if it's like I little micro things. Right. And I, I think that that's the part where Bill's got to play that, that chess match, right? Because at, at times, when you're going to pressure Brady, are you going to pressure him and potentially get a big play out there? Or are you going to drop maybe rush two or three, which you've seen people do in the past and yeah. have some success, yeah. where you drop a bunch of people in the zone, make him hold the ball because you know where he's going to be. He's not going to hurt you with your legs mm -hmm. and just get more people into the zones and also into coverage-based defense. So it's it's really interesting dynamic on how you can approach this game. I don't think pressuring him all day is going to be the answer. Mm. At Jim, a few with your thoughts, we'll dig That's into true. this game more over the next couple of days. But tonight we have Trevor Lawrence getting his first